All right, so a client has brought me their HP laptop. It's a HP Pavilion X360. And what's happening is the, I believe it's the T key and the delete key aren't working. And I'm just going in to uh, confirm that, just into Notepad to do some tests. Yeah, so the T key and the delete key do not work. It took about a week for the replacement keyboard to come in. So in the meantime, what he did is he made a copy of the T key. And uh, every time he needed a T while he was typing, he would hit Control V to paste it in, which worked well for him. The way he uses his computer, um, an external laptop really wasn't uh, feasible. So before I go opening this thing up, I'm just going to take a look at the keyboard. And there's an extra bit here that I don't know what it is right away. Um, I'll figure it out in a, in a minute or two. So here's the keyboard. Oh yeah, still looking at it. So what it is, it's the, um, it's the backlight for the keyboard. It sits underneath the keyboard. Now I think I just figured that out. So I'm just putting the keyboard up to the original and looking for differences. The only difference I found is right there on the Alt key, there's a GR on the replacement. I'm assuming it's intended for another language. This keyboard didn't come from HP, it's actually a third party company, and he found it on, uh, on Amazon. I think it was $18 for the keyboard. Um, ideally, what I have people do, or I order for them, a complete um, palm rest. Um, the way that uh, this particular keyboard goes in, it's kind of sandwiched together, and um, you'll see it here in a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking these screws out of the bottom. Ordinarily when I make these videos, I do the commentating uh, along with it as I'm working on it. But uh, on this one, um, I'm trying this, uh, this other way of doing it where I don't say anything during the, uh, the actual repair and then I go back and uh, comment over after the fact. I did this like a year and a half ago or something like that on a Toyota Camry starter replacement video and it seemed to work pretty well. So all the screws are out of the bottom and what I need to do now is separate along this edge and I try and use plastic whenever possible but this one was just particularly tight plastic will not fit and pop through. So switch to a metal tool just to get a crease started. Or not a crease, but a, a gap started. There it is. And then back to, uh, to plastic. There's actually a nylon tool if I remember right. The advantage of nylon is it's uh, very soft and it's uh, just about impossible to scratch anything on a computer with it. As opposed to metal, which if you use a lot of metal tools on a computer to do something like this, you'll end up scratching the hell out of it and sometimes even breaking it. So I'm just going around the edge. And this one is particularly uh, tight fitting. There it goes. That should have been the last of the difficult part, getting it separated.
And on this one, you have to reach in and disconnect three uh, ribbon cables, which you really can't see very well at this point. But there's little tabs that you flip up, and then the, uh, the ribbon cables come out. So before I go taking apart that um, palm rest to replace the keyboard, I'm plugging in the replacement keyboard just to make sure that it fits and everything works. So you can see right there how the tab uh, closes on it. All right, powering up and going into Windows. So I typed notepad and the T's working. And I'm gonna check the delete key and it also works. Thumbs up. All right, so I'm gonna use the, use the keyboard to power the computer down. And you may have noticed that when I told the computer to shut down, I held down the shift key on the keyboard. What that does is it makes the computer really shut down as opposed to going into some kind of a hybrid sleep, which quite a few newer computers do. So it really turns the computer off, not just kind of puts it to sleep. So yeah, here's the uh, the palm rest that has the keyboard and the trackpad. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm looking it over for um, what's holding it together. And at this point, all I can see is uh, three screws along the bottom and then three screws just above the trackpad. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting the screws that came out of parts next to the parts so I know where the screws go, you know, with what part. And that should allow the trackpad to come right out. Okay. So I've done one of these before, um, not an HP. I, I think it was a Fujitsu a year or two ago where it was like this, where everything was just sandwiched together. And the thing about it is on palm rests like this on very thin laptops, a lot of the times they'll do this where it's all plastic riveted together. And really the only way to get it apart is to break out the plastic rivets. So what I'm doing is just kind of verifying that I haven't missed any screws and I'm going to start probing for a weak spot where I can start the process of breaking it off. Just getting my fingernails under it and pulling, hoping, hoping it'll start popping. And then switching to a tool. This is going to start the process. right about here. Just pushing firmer and firmer until finally pop. So when this happens, um, the little plastic rivets will start flying everywhere. A lot of them will end up on the table, but uh, I'm sure there's a good 15 or 20 just spread around my room. What I did right there, my left arm was pushing up against some of the plastic and I was checking to make sure I hadn't cut myself which can happen if you put a lot of pressure on a thin piece of plastic on your skin and then especially slide over the plastic, you can cut yourself. All right, there we go. I just got, uh, got it started. So at this point, you just follow it along, separating it, popping the, uh, the plastic rivets. And what this is that I'm taking off right now is just like a back plate. It's not uh, the keyboard itself. Just about there. And there's just a little bit of tape holding it on the rest of the way. Alright, so that's the back plate. 
Now I'm going to go about actually taking off the, the keyboard and the backlight, which comes off quite a bit easier. This is held in by some more plastic rivets. And there it goes. So you can't see there, but there's lots of plastic rivets plus, you know, just debris in the keyboard, you know, food and bits of skin and pet hair and all kinds of stuff. Just doing a swipe off of my desk. And then I also, I think, notice here that there's lots of, uh, looks like pet hair, uh, kind of stuck. Kind of brushed it off. Okay, so that is the old keyboard and backlight, and those two are still sandwiched together. There's no reason to take them apart. But what I'm going to do is set the new versus the uh, next to the uh, the old, and kind of match them up. So yeah, the backlight has a cable, and the keyboard, of course, has a cable, and they're they're bent at a certain point. And I'm going to try and match that bend as well as line up the backlight to the keyboard. Once I'm sure about that, there's actually some plastic on the backlight that I'm going to peel off, which will reveal some light glue that uh, holds the back plate to the, I'm uh, not, not the back plate, the back, back light to the keyboard. So yeah. So now the glue is exposed, and I'm just going to lay it down in the, the proper orientation. Just like that. And then there's a bit of glue on the back of the keyboard data cable. I'm sorry, at this point I think the camera's a little bit too high up, angled too high up, so it's not as easy to see things as I would have liked. Okay. So I've got the keyboard laid in there. I'm just making sure it's going to line up properly. Looks good. I'm just kind of pushing it in. Okay, now so the back plate, that kind of sandwiches it all together. I'm trying to figure out the orientation, it's upside down, yeah, there we go, and still needs to be rotated. Figure it out. Rotate. Now, and I should realize it, there. That's correct. So that will go kind of down like that. And set down. There. Again, sorry about the, the camera angle. It's too high. So yeah, that's okay. And at this point, I realize that the, uh, the back plate is... Uh, is bent up considerably and what I'm going to do is take it off and kind of try and bend it back into place or back uh, flat as possible anyway Okay, so yeah, you can see it there. It's it's considerably bent. So what I'm going to do is just kind of bend it back as flat as possible. Probably spend a couple of minutes doing this. So yeah, um, the reason we didn't get a, a full um, palm rest with keyboard and trackpad all together is it was almost $200 just for that part, as opposed to, I think this was $15-ish. So quite a bit... Um, cheaper for the for the client 
However, it's not ideal. Um, as this goes along, you'll see that um, it's impossible to get it back together 100% correct. Uh, you can get it really close and it works well, but it's not quite right. So if it's not too much more expensive, like if this was, if it was like 60 or 70 bucks for the full uh, palm rest with everything included as a replacement, that would be the thing to do. But I can see his point, almost $200 for, uh, for the part was a bit much. So I had to make some compromises. All right, so I've got it, I think, pretty well flat, as flat as it's going to get. And I put it on upside down. Okay, so going back together. And it's going at 3x speed. So what I'm going to do is just take some tape and kind of tape it down along the edges. So it basically stays in place as I turn it over and... Uh, try and put it back together. In a situation like this, what you do is you you rely on the sandwiching of it going together the entire laptop to hold it in place the rest of the way. All right, so I'm putting back on the trackpad. Looking for my screwdriver, there it is. And yeah, it's held in with three screws along the top and three screws along the bottom. Again, sorry about the camera angle. The way I make these videos is I, I have my phone strapped to my head um, with a little um, harness I got from, uh, from Amazon. It's like a $20 thing, it works pretty well. And then I have a, a tablet that I use as a viewfinder so I can see, you know, what the camera sees while it's on my head. Unfortunately, that stopped working. Um, so I have to come up with some other solution so I can see what the camera sees while I'm recording and this doesn't happen in the future. I just found a little bit of plastic uh, that I pulled out. But generally the keyboard looks to be aligned properly. And more stuff came out of it, looks like. All right, so then there's also a, a metal plate that goes along the bottom. I don't realize it at the very beginning, but there's a little thing on the left side that kind of goes under a bit of plastic on the palm rest right there. Screws in and tight. Okay, so you're not going to be able to see what I do here probably, but you kind of, yeah, you can't see it. Um, those three cables you have to plug in. Oh, I just realized I, I had disconnected the trackpad cable from the wrong side, so I just fixed that, and there we go. So all three in, connected. And then we're going to give it a try, make sure everything works. So I just went into Windows, open up Notepad, and I'm checking all the keys. Yeah, 
you can kind of see it there, the, the upper right of the keyboard. Um, it's kind of recessed in, and there's, there's not a way to, to get that perfect. Unless, like, you took it back to the factory and they redid the rivets for you. Okay, so doing the shutdown because everything looks good. Okay, so here I realize that the trackpad is in and working, but it's misaligned a little bit. There's a bit of a gap at the bottom on especially the left side. So I'm going to take it back apart and realign it. So disconnecting the cables. I'm also messing with these little rubber tab things that are along the edge that uh, came out a little bit. So what I'm doing, I'm sorry you can't see it, little rubber bits, um, I, I, I imagine they're just there for aesthetics, but they came misaligned just a little bit, so I'm kind of sticking them back into place before I deal with the trackpad. And what I'm going to do there is just loosen the screws kind of move the trackpad into the correct orientation, then screw it back down. I'm just loosening, I'm not taking any of them out. So I tried just the bottom ones to see if I could get it to move, it didn't, so I'm also going to loosen the top ones. I think that did the trick. Can't quite see it from this view. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, it's it's aligned correctly now. So what I'm going to do is turn it back over and tighten the screws down. Looks good. Looks good, feels good. Give it a once over. Okay, one of the little things had fallen out again. Yeah, little just little gray bits of rubber. I can't figure out a reason for them to be there, but I, I guess they look nice. Okay, so last time back in. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure those little rubber bits are aligned properly and then pushing down all around the edges, snap it back together. Right, so at this point, um, I just started it up again, made sure everything was still working, um, put the screws in the bottom, and it was all ready to go. Again, this was a keyboard replacement on an HP Pavilion X360. Thanks for watching.